ESCOM needs to have someone like a Gayton McKenzie on its newly constituted board to deal with the various mafia elements that have become part of its operational existence. This was the sentiment expressed by billionaire businessman Rob Hersoff. He recently attracted public attention when he slammed the ANC government, describing it as full, as, full of incompetence and criminal elements, describing President Cyril Ramaphosa as spineless and useless. He says they're responsible for presiding over a declining economy. I caught up with the businessman. We discussed a myriad of issues like the energy crisis and possible resolutions to it, black economic empowerment and what South Africa needs to do to position its economy for the future. We started with the energy issue. So let's talk ESCOM first, okay? Andre de Reiter is a terrific businessman and doing a very good job. He can fix, he can reduce debt, he can fix the balance sheet, he can try and put decent processes in place. But the mafia runs ESCOM. There's a diesel mafia, a cable mafia. Every single element of ESCOM has a mafia involved, okay? And they are stealing and breaking. And it's been approved by the ANC many years ago by appointing cadres. I call them cadres, not cadres. The board of ESCOM is made up of school teachers and ballet dancers and circus clowns. And all of a sudden, Pravin Gordon wakes up and says, we've got to put engineers on the board. I mean, how, it's taken 10 years to work that out, Pravin. How useless is he? So I know you didn't want me to snap at the ANC, but I've had enough of them. They are absolutely useless. So to fix ESCOM, you've got to have someone like Andre de Reiter continue You've got to replace the board immediately and put in people that understand energy. And you've got to bring in someone who can deal with the mafia. And a man put his hand up a week or so ago, Gaten McKenzie, said, make me head of ESCOM. I'll deal with the mafia. You need a guy like that can go in and clear out the mafia. So that's ESCOM. But let's talk energy broadly. At the moment, we have you know, guilt about our great reserves of coal and fossil fuels. Let's not be guilty anymore. Why should we listen to the international community that says we can't use our coal? They used coal. Now they've got guilt about climate change. And they're telling they're us still we... still using coal. Correct. So we should go back to fossil fuel and get our energy independency. But we need to add nuclear and we need to add gas. We have incredible amounts of uranium in this country and the ability to be a leader in small modular uranium reactors, SMRs. 50 megawatt, containable, clean, safe, quite quick to and relatively inexpensive to install. We need to open the doors to get this done, not by government, by the private sector. And on gas, we have a fifth largest basin of shale gas under the central Karoo sitting there. Fr it used to be called fracking, we call it gas to power. And it's been done safely and very cost effectively in America and Canada for 20, 30 years. And why can't we do it here? Liz Truss, one of the first things she announced in her, in her new government, and that's a separate discussion, was fracking will be allowed if the community approves it. Brilliant move, day one. Why aren't we doing that? And Gwed is holding this up because he wants his department to run everything. Well, we know they're not very good at running anything. You've got to let the private sector in. Approve nuclear and uranium, approve gas to power, and let's get energy independency for this country. Rob, you're on record as not having said very flattering things about BEE. Yep. Tell us, what is your position on BEE? BEE is theft. You know, the, the ANC has run this country for 30 years, okay? So, the, I don't like to talk in colour, but let's say the, the black South African majority has run this country for 30 years. Why do you need BEE? Why do you, need, I mean, I understand inclusion, I understand shareholder in, you know, involvement, but why do you need policy of BEE? It, it's keeping foreign investment away, and most of the BEE appointees didn't put up money and have done nothing whatsoever to help those companies. But they didn't have money to start off with. I know, but it should be over now. We should say 30 years is enough. BEE should end. And, and let's not talk about this, you know, EWC nonsense. I mean, if you want to scare away foreign investment, the ANC are doing a really good job at that. Rob, you know, some people watching will say, well, it's, um, it's nice for Rob to say that, but he's a beneficiary 
of apartheid. He's a beneficiary in the sense yeah. that, in the sense, as a kid. yes, you were, you were a kid, and like you say, you were born lucky. But at the end of the day, you were born in a system whereby um, your family was running an enterprise during the apartheid years. And, and obviously, you know, your business, you've profit, profited from it and your great grandchildren, you're going to be OK. So from from the perspective of a black person sitting in Kailicha or wherever, they might say, well, it's easy for you to say that. It is easy for me to say. And that's why I'm saying it. And I should be saying it. You know, the problem with B is you get if I hate to say Julius Malema was right on anything. OK. But he did say once that instead of benefiting all the usual suspects with BEE, it's just an elite, by the way. People in Kailicha have had zero benefit. They shouldn't even want BEE, they should want foreign investment. Enough to the people you know who we're talking about. The, you know, at some point you have to say to yourself, enough's enough, you've had an opportunity, and now let's open the market to to proper investment and proper opportunity. And I think 30 years is enough. And I suppose fixing our education system as well. Cool. We have to fix everything. You know, our energy system's broken, our rail system's broken, our education system is deadly broken, and that's gonna affect us for a long time to come. Everything is broken. This country's broken. As we talk about this country, we obviously live in a global village and there's a lot happening in the global village. You're a businessman who um, runs several businesses and you're, you know, you're ahead of, ahead of the curve in terms of understanding what's changing in the, in the global arena. So just give us a sense of um, some of the skills you think South Africa needs for the future and, and what, the, what the future economy looks like and how South Africa needs to be located within it. That's a, such a great question. That's such a great, I mean, South Africa's at a point where we are, we're desperate for jobs, desperate for education, desperate for energy. If we've gone back down Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we're at the basic level of survival. The ANC's cocked this country up. But you're saying, what, how do we redirect? If I was speaking to young people, I would say, do not study political science. That's a waste of time. You can read a political science book in your spare time on weekends. You know, you, we need real hard skills. We need technical skills. We need plumbers, we need electricians. We need engineers, we need accountants, we need doctors. We, if we have to, we could add lawyers to that list, but they're my least favorite of that professional category. You know, if you're studying journalism, political science, it's a waste of time. You can do that in your spare time. We need people to study math, to get their reading, writing, and arithmetic to top quality worldwide. Those three things, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And then the future skills of programming and understanding the technology developments, because all businesses, even mining, which is one of the most primitive of you know, industries, in my view, you know, dig a hole in the ground, pull something up, hand it to someone else to, to improve, is becoming tech-enabled. All businesses will be tech businesses or tech enabled. So let's understand what's happening in technology. Let's get programmers coming out of high schools and not political scientists. Thanks very much, Rob.